From across the globe, the Unborn Radio is bringing you the sounds you want to hear. Remember we asked oh you to do this? God. This is the dumbest shit ever. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Sometimes Ginger sings to me. Do you know what? I'm just gonna bank that's working. I. I... <laughs> Sometimes Ginger sings. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We oh. are going to start walking. Alright, hang on. So where, where are we now, Herb? The PB Clubhouse. When we first started PB on the PS4. Exactly, exactly. And what, like, how many people would be at this one? Maybe was it 15 in this club this, or in the charge this time? Oh, fuck. Yeah, something like that. Um, I think about that time a total of 30 guys, so yeah, it would have been about 10, between 10 and 15, I have to say. So when you came over, um, basically describe, so can you describe what happened? So it was blank count for a while, and can you describe kind of the process of where PB evolved from YPB and who was in charge and that sort of thing? <clears throat> uh, yeah, when I came over, I was in BC for a while, there was literally like six of us, and then... Uh, we were just playing all the time, shit started to grow, and uh, a lot of the older members started to transfer over, like, uh, from PS3, like Danny and Stan and uh, Nick, John, and some others, at which point we decided to open a second chapter because of the way we were growing, so, uh, me and Nick went and started it. Hell, there's a lot of guys there that aren't even here now anymore, uh, Norway Legend, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, uh, yeah. How could you? Well, he showed once up once here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Silly Poo, who, uh, that's my boy, Silly. Um, yeah, he came over with us, and I think it basically started from that. Like, there's literally only a handful of us, and then, uh, started recruiting guys like Mike, and, uh, Rippin' Lips was another one that was there. Oh, yeah, Rippin', yeah. yeah. Blaine Diesel, he was another one that was there. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, that was so long ago. It was so long ago, yeah. But there was a handful of uh, members and uh, strong members to get things going. And he used to side PB. Um, actually, funnily, um, BC then parked up basically beside you over there at the chicken farm. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, I remember that because that was actually their... The B, we voted on making that the clubhouse back in the day because we were tired of everybody using the yellow jack bar because yeah. every MC back then used the yellow jack as a clubhouse so we went out of our way to try and find like buildings we could go into that not a lot of people knew about yeah yeah exactly so you were saying Nick John obviously he's the former national president he was president of uh, Palito Bay um I don't know if that was a joint decision on why Pluto Bay or what, what what drove it to be in this area. Uh, honestly, I think Nick picked it. If yeah, I yeah. remember correctly. Like, I remember wanting to go to Del Piro or something like that, but nobody wanted to go down to Del Piro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we I, kind always of... wanted, I always wanted a DP patch. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you got you got it. <laughs> um. Yeah, so we kind of just jumped straight into this, explain about PB, but we haven't really explained, we haven't really introduced yourself, so uh, what's your PSN name, how long you've been here, what positions have you done? I'm Herb T, I've been here since forever, I don't know, it's been a really long time, I've been here since PS3, it's been at least five years, well no, it'd be about six, because I was still living in Florida when I joined. Um... I've been in BC. Holy shit, sorry about that. There was a sign that just went off right outside my window. I apologize. Um, <laughs> That's gone for <laughs> uh, Yeah, no, I was vice president over in BC for a while. Um, then I went to Polito Bay and I was vice president there for a while. I've been sergeant, enforcer. Um, I think I was originally treasurer back on PS3. Um, I think I've been just about everywhere except for road captain to be honest so you've definitely put your fingers in different pies and helped around the club and different charters I just try and do fill slots that needed filled at the time fill roles that needed filled it's about the top rocker 
Yeah, it's all about the top rocker. It's been that way since I joined. I mean, uh, hell, Lightning, I've known him for, like I said, probably five or six years now, and shit, I consider him like family. Yeah, yeah. Um, where did you discover the club? Uh, actually, I was riding in another club, and I was trying to recruit for them because we were smaller, and I ran into S. Jizzle, Danny, and I was like, yo, what's up? Because he just, like, this is back in PS3, and there wasn't all the message boards and shit, and yeah, I yeah. come across another person riding in a leather cut with a full patch on, and a session was uncommon, so you, there was kind of, like, you would hesitate, but roll Mutual up, and respect. then start yeah, I started texting through the in-game phone, and I was like, your shit's whack, come join me. He's yeah, like, yeah. nah, bro, your shit's whack, come join me. And uh, <laughs> he sent me some links and stuff to the social club, and I checked it out. And, uh, yeah, obviously I liked what I saw, and I've been here ever since. Um, What club was it that you were in before? Obviously, people, some people uh, don't know. Or... I was in, a, what was it, Grim Legion or Grim Somethings? Some grim something. It's very generic. Uh, they babe. One of, yeah, the, and they were pretty cool. I was there for only for a couple months. Like that was me getting my toes into the whole GTA role play thing. Yeah, and uh, then they got featured on the news web back in the day, which yeah. literally would like was a mark for death back then because the crew went from like twenty or thirty members and ballooned well up over hundred. Yeah. yeah. And nobody knew anybody and every time you got on it was just a full session of guys that you didn't know. And it wasn't there was no real brotherhood there. It was funny, was I was saying this to Danny the other day that that's actually similar to what happened to us and then Yeah. Things just kinda hit the fan didn't it? Yeah. Too many people and Yeah. Yeah, too divided, trying to grow too fast. I mean, that was the nature of the thing. But I think that also has a lot to do with, you know, this game in general and how popular it was. I don't think any of us foresaw how big some of this would grow, you know? Hell, I no. didn't think I'd be here as, this many years later still Six talking years, to guys yeah. that I've met through a video game, you know? Yeah, that's true. Strong structure. Um, yeah. So, where would you see the future of this club going? Because obviously we're talking about how long... It's been here, and where would you see this go? Ah, dude, it, I, it's hard to pinpoint because everywhere I thought it would be, it's completely grown and evolved with the game itself, which I guess is what I ultimately hope to see it continue to do is evolve with the way the gaming style evolves. And as long as the core structure stays there, I think we can honestly take it wherever we want. Yeah, that's true. We do have a very strong structure and obviously we follow them rules pretty strictly and we sort of have to and that's what keeps us, or keeps us here for so long and uh, have to be strict with that sort of stuff. Right. Um, for you, what would be the biggest obstacle you face in the club? Ooh, that's a tough one. Ooh, almost got me right <laughs> um, Well, besides avoiding oppressors and tryhards and all that fun stuff which we all have learned to do uh, I mean honestly I think the hardest part is just with any large group you get this many people together and they all have their own opinions and they all think uh, you know what's best is different but keeping everybody on the same page and everything I think that's probably the hardest thing yeah trying to accommodate everyone's opinions and right. stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what would be your thoughts on the whole free aim, auto aim, and the one percenter aspect of the community? <laughs> I think it's all stupid. <laughs> um, the whole—I mean, you can ask anybody. Like, the, we're not true one percent because we're in auto aim, but we used to do free aim back in the day. We actually left because there was no—it was too much of competition. It was all about who the best shot was. And ultimately, who decided that auto aim is not one percent? Some other guy in some club that none of us know. And it's just been the agreed upon standard. But one day, one guy just wrote it down, and that was uh, it. Yeah, was decided. you'll hear a lot of people go the original MC Union or whatever <laughs> back, <laughs> back in the day because they literally that's how serious they used to take it. Is they used to have entire clubs, make a whole new club, and just put presidents and vice presidents in it 
Yeah. And they would sit around a table and try and decide what was best for everybody. Which yeah. also ended in a massive war where none of them talked to anybody anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you could change one thing about this club, what would it be? I would probably name it the United Herbs Heroes Club. <laughs> Spoil, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> probably have to work herb in there somewhere. You know of course you'd have to, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I, I don't know, man. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time here. I've gotten mad. I've gotten happy. I've gotten sad. It's just, it's been a pleasure to be here and be part of this and help it grow see you wouldn't change a whole lot you're pretty happy with the structure and all yeah I mean I think the structure changes as it needs to because the right guys have been in the right spots for long enough and the guys that are there know like you know if you can't fill a spot move on and we've seen it happen more than once where guys just go you know can't do it no more and they step down and yeah, so the, yeah. The newer, younger guys step up and uh, take over, which actually that's been one of the funnest parts about yeah. being in the club is watching some of these younger guys come in and take over stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that actually. Um, what would be your biggest regret in the club? Oh, dude, that's that hands down. It would have to be that whole PBBC thing and how it all just got way out of control and. Yeah, all no, that, completely. that was all stupid, and I still, to this day, as being a vice president at the time, don't. I understand parts of it, but I don't understand how like, it got so bad. How, how it got so bad? Yeah, and yeah. that that hands down would be one of the, because I was in a leading role at that time, and I feel like I failed the club and let that happen. Yeah, I get that. Um, so if you could go back, that'd be one thing you'd definitely change. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all heard the speech, Top Rocker, Hell, me, and uh, I think Lightning, and a few other guys sat around a table back, way back then and came up with that, and it's, you know, would have started preaching that when we originally did the split, but I think everything's worked out for the better, though, because, you know, trial error. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's that whole thing that you can say it's a regret, but if it never happened, you wouldn't have learned from it kind of thing. Heck, we had an Xbox chapter for a short we period of time. We did, we did. We were both um, Xbox so, and PS4. That was so sad. Yeah, and I mean, we, we reached out, we tried, you know, realized that the ship box isn't for us, but... <laughs> I think it was too hard to manage from this side, because we don't know yeah. what's happening. Definitely, definitely. Uh, if you had to tell new members or prospects one thing, what would it be? Uh, sit down, pay attention, and... uh Read up on them rules, because a uh, well-versed rule book. It's funny, I said the same carry thing. Carry you a long way. Yeah. yeah. A well-versed rule book will carry you a long way. Just knowing the simple things and knowing when to fall in line. You, know, you can go anywhere you want to go. Just know your place. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I, I mean, I never wanted to be an officer in the first place, actually. I turned my first offer down, and they kind of forced me into it. <laughs> Where, how long were you... Actually, so that, that was going to leave me on. How long were you prospecting for and a patch member before you became into hierarchy? Uh, back in the day, we used to do a two-vouch system where there wasn't a set prospecting time. I literally prospected for, like, a day. And uh, S. Jizzle, Danny, vouched on me. And then Stan, obviously the founder, came back and said, Hey, Danny vouched for you, and he's only ever done it once before. <laughs> So I'm going to vouch for you too. And so yeah, I was in within a day and then I was probably, I was definitely a patch member for the better part of a year before I even got a shot at it. And that was also in the time where you had a lot of uh, the more experienced officers transferring to PS4 and stuff like that, which opened up a lot of opportunity. So yeah. yeah. Um, what member would you say has influenced you the most? Lightning, Stan, Danny. Danny's always got some, something to teach you. That's true. And I'm going to throw Nick in there, too, even though he's not around anymore. But he definitely, uh, he was one of the first guys to take me under his wing and go, like, hey, this is how shit works and stuff. And then Lightning picked up and continued to educate me. And 
Stan's always been great. Yeah, that's true. It's a strong choice, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Um, what do you think oh. separates us as a club from others? Uh, Why are we standing at a trash can? Let's keep walking. <laughs> yeah, get away from this dumpster fire. <laughs> honestly, I think what makes us stand out, once again, uh, I said it earlier, is like our core, core values and our core group, and even though it's ever-changing and everything... The idea has always been there. It's all about the top rocker. It's all about the brotherhood, the better men of the club, and enjoying the game in each other. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't get that feel from a any other club I've met. And I've, I mean, I've met my fair share. Yeah. So it's really for you. It's really just about the brotherhood and the respect, kind of. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, the respect. From the other brothers is great and everything but no yeah man it's honestly about the brotherhood and just the thought that like making real friends and real family through a game you know like i've never met you in person but i guarantee if i'm ever across the ocean damn sure i'm coming to fucking ireland and see your little redheaded ass <laughs> oh pretty much oh you have to obviously do the whole nearly all how many people would you know here dono me lee chasm go by him I, I know I know enough of you that if I have to pay for a hotel, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I'm sure you can be put up somewhere. Um, what would your initial impression of the club be, or what was it? My initial, I was like everybody else. I think that's joined and actually hung around. Like I was actually like thoroughly impressed and awestruck when we first joined, because we didn't have near the amount of communication the way we do now. And just to uh, see, you know, 20 guys get in a session and one person be on mic and all of a sudden he just goes to a certain spot and everybody falls in line, like almost like an army or something yeah. like that. Everybody knows their spot and just riding. It was incredible. I still remember the first time I saw it, I was like fucking giggling like, dude, check this shit out. It's cool as hell. Yeah, but, one of the first times I seen something similar to that was, I think it was one of the biggest ones. We, I mean, I've seen formations what we were done, but one of the biggest ones I was seen is when I think we did a Twisted Clowns were with us, and that's when yeah. they had a few members, and it was us, and there could have been maybe like twenty or twenty five people all lined up together. I'm like, this is cool, and this is obviously yeah. before proper communication, and all, but yeah. Yeah, I think my first ride, my first real crew ride, because once again, I was in another MC, and we rode together, but not, like, the way we ride. Yeah. And the first time seeing, like, I think it was, like, 15 guys all fall in the line, I was just like, what? And once again, there's only, and there's only one person on the mic back then, and it was Stan, and the rest of it was done through, like, text message or... Yeah, the PSN message. Yeah. Like, yeah. So tough. <laughs> um... Yeah. You see, I, I only came on PS4, where communication was only evolving at the start. Um, <laughs> where if you don't have a mic, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> exactly, you guys. You should probably get one. <laughs> um, if you were to say you've learned anything from the club or any experiences, what would you say would be? Honestly, this is going to sound real fucking cheesy. To hear other people's voice, honestly. Like, to sit around the table and not agree with the person explaining something to you but by the end of the conversation totally understanding what they're saying like you know what I mean yeah so you'd say you'd be more open minded basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we can have a rant here alright what one thing would you get off your chest if you had to get it off off my chest yeah well one I gotta call Carl Ho <laughs> No, I always call Carl Ho, but, um, nothing really, man. Like, I don't know. I mean, I like everybody open space here so you can say anything you want about anything. Yeah. I really, see, I don't have, like, a need to rant, though. I really don't have anything to rant about. I, I ran it on every game session every day anyway. <laughs> yeah. What would be... So, I don't know if I, I've asked a few members this already. What's your favorite bike to ride or favorite route? Oof gotta be the gargoyle and you know the famous loop around the whole map really? That is my favorite. it's not boring though no. I, 
Dude, I could honestly probably do it blindfolded at this point. But I thoroughly love it. Like, that's when you everybody gets quiet. They focus in. They're on the highway. You know, and they're just really there. It's, it's one of those rides, I swear. Every time we do it, everybody gets really focused and quiet. And the lines get really straight. And everybody just kind of zones out and cruises. I've never seen that many people in a session. And not a single word we spoke. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what would you say your your favorite event has been? Oof. I've been liking the playlist recently, but I'm still stuck. I like the old school ones, man. Fist the wall fight. rides. Wall rides, yeah. I'm oh, oh school, my god. Troll stuff. I love it, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But there's been there's there's been some great. I mean, honestly, there's been stuff that I would have never even thought of <laughs> that people have come up with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so any final thoughts before we go? Mm. No. De dead air here. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Uh, clap cheeks. Fuck off. <laughs> um, yeah, so until next time. Bye for now. If you want to join, you can go on to www.theunbornmc.com or you can find more merch. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, I will. If you're looking for an MC, please check out www.theunbornmc.com for more information.